Hey, what's up guys? Ken here from the Retro Toy Escapades channel in Malaysia. Now, I've been meaning to get back to my Motu Vintage mini comic reviews for a while now. Uh, today's selection is this entry from 1984. Hands down, one of the worst Motu mini comics that has ever been produced. I still shudder when I think back of some of the art panels in this one, as you will soon see. Leech, the master of power suction unleashed. Now, with a title like that, you would be forgiven for thinking that this was going to be a special origin story on this terrifying leech monster from the evil horde. Nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, Leech is pretty much just a guest star in his own solo book, which actually came packed with his original vintage action figure. Now, this is a pointless tale that just happens to feature Leech in it and involves a bunch of meaningless encounters that amount to nothing. All paired with some of the most grotesque artwork to ever grace a Masters of the Universe tying product. The story begins with Man-at-Arms and Cyclone taking a relaxing stroll along the beach when they suddenly chance upon Merman, who looks scared and confused and drawn really badly, but oh man, does it ever get worse. Merman is babbling on in terror about a sea monster of some kind. Hardly a fitting look for someone who is an ocean warlord and a ruler of the deep. Get a grip, man. Suddenly, the water spart ways, and a gigantic creature rises from within. Now, what in the hell is this green glob supposed to be? That's what I thought when I saw this panel. Turns out that this is supposed to be Leech, or at least the artist's interpretation. And uh, Leech has been scaled up to be as big as something like the Kraken, okay, from Pirates of the Caribbean Part 2. The way the artwork within the panels is structured is just frankly horrible, okay? You get half heads, heads that are overlapping each other, cropped off at odd angles. It's kind of like that one friend or family member that you have that, you know, you never want to ask to take photos because they always manage to slice off, you know, the, either the top of your head when they're taking a shot or like, you know, the bottom of your mouth is missing or something like that, okay? Anyway, this seems to be something that runs throughout the whole comic. Everything appears to be cropped at weird angles. Cyclone tries to take Leech down with a single punch. And there's a fair amount of trash talking as well. Uh, in one panel here, he calls Leech a blustering blowfish. And then when he's laying the smack down on Leech, he says, Try a taste of knuckle sandwich, blubber gut. Yeah, he sure is creative when it comes to the insults. So, in that first encounter, they manage to send Leech retreating into the sea, and then King Randor calls for an audience with their captive prisoner Merman to find out just what exactly is going on here. Now, this next panel here almost drove me to the brink of insanity. You stare at it for a while, and then you begin to wonder to yourself, what exactly is it that you're supposed to be looking at? I mean, this is supposed to be Merman talking, but when in the hell did Merman grow a beard? I mean, you're seeing this, right? He's got a freaking beard, okay? In which continuity of Masters of the Universe can this be passed off as a depiction of Merman? I mean, I'm not imagining it, right? You are looking at the same thing as me. Now, you're telling me that this is supposed to be Merman? It looks more like the evil prince from Aladdin. Anyway, based off Merman's accounts, Adam concludes that the threat from the evil horde is imminent and that Leech's assault was just a first strike. He decides that this is a job for the most powerful man in the universe. And so, it is time to summon He-Man. Now, I know that they were probably going for maybe an aerial shot in the panel, like to show the transformation from above, but the way that this is depicted, it kind of looks more like Adam is lying down. Like he just woke up in the morning and decided to call on the power while still in bed. Ooh, what do you guys think? Back on Eteria and in the lair of the evil Horde, Leech's master, Hordak, is giving him an earful of verbal abuse for failing in his mission to capture Merman. Um, Hordak here calls him a bunch of stuff, like among them, a gormless, cowering twit. Yeah, but you look at this shot here, right? Um, with Hordak standing in front of Leech, and Leech just looks so freaking monstrous. It's like it's like Leech's lips alone could just open up 
and swallow hot egg, all right? Why does he need to take this abuse? You know, he could just freaking eat up hot egg. But somebody's still got to be the boss, right? So anyway, hot egg commands Leech to get back out there and finish the job. Now back to the heroes of Eternia, and they have a plan to use Merman as bait to lure Leech out. The masters assemble, but this is probably one of the worst looking assembly of heroes ever depicted. These misshapen characters are supposed to be Fisto, uh, Roboto, and Mossman. And they all kind of look like they're just chilling out for a fun day at the beach. You know, like, you know, Fisto here looks like he's hanging out and getting a suntan. I mean, looking at this panel, you do have to wonder, how is it that these can be the heroes of Eternia? Upon He-Man's cue, the heroes then chuck Merman into the sea. Surprisingly, a cruel move on their part. I mean, Merman may be evil, but as heroes, their treatment of prisoners here is extremely questionable. Also, the artwork here of Merman just being kind of like chucked into the air like a bathtub toy is just embarrassing. Anyway, Leech soon takes the bait once Merman gets hurled into the water, but you do kind of wonder though, just why exactly is the evil horde so hell-bent on only capturing Merman? Like, what about any of the other heroes or villains of Eternia? Okay, but anyway, just as Merman is about to be attacked by Leech, He-Man springs to action on the talent fighter, and at the same time, Hordak emerges and decides to make himself known. Okay, now I had a hard time trying to figure out what was happening in these few panels here, because... Uh, what the story is trying to tell you is that Hordak is now able to apparently enlarge himself and sort of like become supersized, right? And, you know, even as a Hardak fan, there is no way that you could make out what is taking place here because there's no way you would even expect it, all right? But this panel here is apparently showing you how Hordak is transforming and making himself bigger and it shows these two overlapping heads here, like one head is bigger than the other, because apparently he's expanding. But you know, you just don't expect something like this to be happening in the story. But apparently, this story is capable of just throwing anything at you. All right, okay. There's no established continuity where Hordak can do something like this. You know, expand his size to become something like Godzilla levels. But this story is telling you that he can. All right. And that's probably also the reason why Leech is able to become so huge. Um, yeah, you know, can all the members of the Evil Horde, in fact, become super large? So yeah, He-Man in the Talon Fighter is now engaged in a furious battle with Mega Hordak, who's now the size of the Empire State Building. In one scene here, where Hordak's giant monster fists slam into the Talon Fighter, He-Man says, Gadzooks spinning out of control. You know, for some reason, I just felt the dialogue was really clumsy and silly. Okay, when does He Man ever say stuff like Gadzooks? Okay, that's something that you'd expect, you know, the Bird Ward Robin from the 1966 TV series Batman show to say. Okay, you know, something like that Robin to say. Not, you know, something that the most powerful man in the universe would say. Okay, not Gadzooks. Now, while all this is going on, Skeletor, in a rare and touching display of concern for his employees, turns up and actually manages to save Merman from Leech. Now, how about that? By contrast, the three heroes of Eternia, Fisto, Roboto, and Mossman, are just standing around being completely useless and just watching and narrating everything that happens. Guys, shouldn't you at least be trying to stop Leech? Back to the battle, and He-Man has a plan to stop the skyscraper Hordak by crashing the Talon Fighter straight into him. Now, don't ask me how that's gonna work, but it sure does sound macho. Now we get this spectacularly explosive scene as the talent fighter then makes impact. But it isn't quite clear just what exactly is blowing up here. Uh, yeah, because we see the talent fighter more or less still present. But the explosion causes Hordak to be thrown straight into the portal, right back to his home world of Eteria. And Leech apparently disappears too. But we don't see this happening. 
Okay, uh, it's it's just mentioned like off camera. It's Leach's book, and he doesn't even seem to get a decent send off. The story ends with the heroes celebrating He Man's return. But yo, you guys should just be happy that you still have a job, cause y'all did jack shit in this story. Okay, but. How exactly did He-Man and most of the talent fighter even survive the impact with Super Hordak? And what was it that was exploding? Well, you know, the story was designed to be so bad that no one would even bother to ask. Okay, you'll just be happy that it's over. Yes, over. But not before gazing at this one last hellish shot of what appears to be a demonic looking moss man. Okay. <laughs> you see this? You see the face that moss man is making at He Man? Yeah, those eyes. God, let it end. Still, all is not lost. Because as you turn the book's final page and you get to the back cover, you are treated to something that's truly awesome the promotional pics for the line of evil hot action figures from Mattel. So much better, guys so much better okay guys so that's the video i hope you guys enjoyed it i actually had a lot of fun putting this thing together and i laughed quite a bit too let me know what you thought of the video in the comment section below let me know what else you want to see you know what other reviews you want me to do for the mini comics and i'll catch all of you guys again real soon thank you